Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host RJ McCready. And for this episode I'm going to be taking you guys back again to the 1970s. We're going to be looking at a cult road movie today which is Vanishing Point. That's right. We're going to be jumping into that 1971 Dodge Challenger. We're going to fire up that V8. going to get that engine purring over. And we're going to join Kowalski along the Nevada Desert. We're going to burn some rubber. So let's get that engine started and let's move on. Let's have a look at the trailer and we'll talk about the greatness of Vanishing Point. I'll see you guys soon. Name, Kowalski. Occupation, driver. Transporting a supercharged Dodge Challenger from Denver to San Francisco. Background, Medal of Honor in Vietnam. Former stock and bike racer. Former cop, dishonorably discharged. Now he uses speed to get himself up, to get himself gone. Everybody's after Kowalski, for one reason or another. Is there something I can do for you? Well, like what? Like anything you want. Everybody wants a piece of his hide. Maybe kill somebody. Maybe stole that big dude of his. Maybe both. They want to get him and put him away, but they'll have to catch him first. Ah, good morning, folks. This is yours truly, super, super soul. Directed live transmission from K-O-W. With the wham, bam, boom, boom, wake up music. being chased by the blue, blue meanies on wheels. The vicious traffic squad cars are after our known driver. The super driver of the Golden West. The police numbers are getting closer, closer, closer to our soul hero in his soul mobile. They're going to kill him, smash him, rip the last American hero. It's the maximum trip at maximum speed. Vanishing point. And welcome back, guys. So, Vanishing Point 1971's uh, action crime thriller. It's got a 99 minute runtime. And the synopsis for this film is during the 1970s, a car delivery driver, Kowalski, delivers hot rods in record time but always runs into trouble with the highway cops. It stars Barry Newman as Kowalski, he's cause ice in this movie. He was f notably famous for a TV show called uh, Petro Petrocelli, try and say that, put my teeth back in, uh, which ran from 1974 to 1976. It stars Cleveland Little as Super Soul, the radio DJ. He is known um, in a film called The Blazing Saddles, which most of you would probably know with Gene Wilder as a Mel Brooks movie and it also stars D Dean Jagger as the Snake Wrangler, I'll we'll get into that later on. The film was directed by Richard C. Saffron or Saffron, try to pronounce that. Uh, this is probably his best movie, one of, his, one of the biggest movies that he made. He also made um, TV shows, uh, he was involved with the Batman TV show, The Twilight Zone, um, and he also did a lot of Western TV shows uh, back in the 60s. Uh, whilst we're on it, we'll talk about the soundtrack to this film, it is incredible, I love it, I've got it on vinyl downstairs, it sounds amazing. I've also got it in my car, funny enough, I do play it when I'm in my car, I do, don't tell anybody, I do pretend to be Kowalski when I'm driving my motor with these songs, but not driving like he does in this film just <laughs> just to let you know but I do play this in my car it sounds great it sounds great with the movie uh, you've got a song called where do we go from here which is when Kowalski starts up that challenge and gets chased by the police which is a great song by Jimmy Walker 
Uh, the Girl Got It Together by Bobby Doyle and the Super Soul theme song by JB Pickers sounds incredibly good. It's incredibly 70s. It's hard to explain without playing it, but go check it out. I think I've posted one of the songs on my Facebook page, so have a look at that. So what I'll start with Vanishing Point? Well, let's start with this. Let's say it is a road movie. It's a car chase movie. So let's go into, say, a VHS store in the 80s. We do like the old VHS store in the 80s. Or anywhere, TV guide, whatever. You could speak to someone and say Vanishing Point. It's a car chase movie. Um, you pick up the VHS. You look at the front cover. It's got a car and it's got all the police helicopters and cars chasing after this vehicle so before I saw this movie um, when I heard about it I thought that Kowalski had either done a bank robbery there was, that, that might have been the reason why he was in the car trying to get away from the police because that's usually what happens in these types of movies no it's not it's surprisingly not it's more when you look at this film, it's got a little bit of a deeper story to it. I mean, it's a fun movie, um, but when I first watched it, you, you you kind of, how can I explain it? You kind of sort of warm to Kowalski because he is a guy that has tried to do everything he can in life generally. He's a, he's a war hero. He's got the Medal of Honor. He used to be a police officer. He got discharged from that. Um, he's tried to be in a relationship. I think that went south, unfortunately. Um, I think his wife or girlfriend passed away. He tried to be a stock car dro- uh, racer. And he had an accident which which stopped him from being able to be involved in that. So he's a guy that's tried to really fit in with um, society. And so it, the other thing here to mention with that, it, it almost foreshadows the... Forrest Gump story, if that makes sense. So you've got a character here who is telling the story. He's not telling the story, but as he's driving, you're having these flashbacks. And so as the movie rolls along, he's not just... He's driving because it's like the only thing that he knows to do. He's kind of going, well, I'm just going to hit my foot on the throttle and just go. And the police are chasing after him. But he's got morals, Kowalski. He's not a bad guy. He's not a horrible person. And this shows throughout the movie, so you've got some great chart car chases. Um, there's a guy that turns up in a knee type Jag who challenges him to a race. And they're driving along together and the guy in the knee type Jag goes off the cliff. But Kowalski, it's Kowalski, instead of driving off, he stops to make sure that guy's alright. And it's the same with the police, when the police uh, motorcycles crash. Kowalski doesn't just go off, he just makes sure that he, he stops to make sure they're okay. So he's a guy that... Um, does care about people um, but then he continues with this adventure and the other thing I like about this part of the movie as well is there's a scene where Kowalski meets a young lady who is on a motorcycle and she's naked and Kowalski is uh, rolling up a cigarette or she helps him roll up a cigarette and she says there's something else I can do for you but Kowalski goes nah it's okay I'm, I'm cool and I think it's kind of like a bit of a, it doesn't, it does the movie a favour, I think. Instead of Kowalski sleeping with this girl, it doesn't make him cheap and I kind of like that. It just gives him that bit of loyalty, whether he's just thinking in the back of his mind, you know, I lost, I lost the love of my life and I'm still getting over that. So I think that's good. I, I really like that part of the movie. It's a, it's a part where they could have gone down that route of him just sleeping with this girl and just driving and that's it. But, um... I don't think that cheapens the movie at all. And that sort of secures the point of what I'm trying to say with Kowalski is he's he's not a bad bloke. You know, he's 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 not a bank robber or anything like that. That's not that's not where I thought this film was going to go. He's just a guy who's just driving a car and um, trying to get from point A to B and it's and he's just still trying to find himself in, in life generally. So um, I know it's a, I know it's a deep point, but um, I think that's where this film could be overlooked and that's what I'm trying to sort of dig out with this film um, if you haven't seen this film it's worth seeing for for that reason it's almost sort of poignant for 
um, things that we're going through today. Not that I want to go into sort of like politics or anything like that. I want to keep to the cinema. So yeah, so moving on from that though, uh, the other thing that's mentioned, the cinematography of this film is beautiful. It's beautifully shot in the desert. Um, you've got some really nice camera scenes there of the car. And it's a real challenge as well. And I think the sounds and everything in this movie are real with the helicopters, the car chases. Everything feels really raw, feels really gritty. And it's um, very similar to the films like uh, which I've reviewed before on my other podcast, which was uh, Mad Max 2 with George Miller. Um, particularly the Mad Max trilogy being another road movie they are raw they are gritty there's no cgi there's no um cgi special effects like that what you see in this movie is all real which is great um so it's a real gritty 70s movie great soundtrack um can't compliment it enough so the basic plot of this movie is as i said it is basic it is just literally kowalski um, accepting a challenge to say they'll get this car from Denver to California in one night which is a hell of a task um, he almost kind of does it I think he gets to California and then he's got a roadblock and he's got all the police there and it's all um, like getting very climatic to the final Kowalski drives up to the roadblock and then he spins back round again and then he had, there's a scene where he just gets out of the car and he just sort of has a think to himself and you don't really know what he's thinking of and then he just get back, gets back into the car and then he drives into the roadblock and goes up in like a sort of blaze of glory really um, and it's kind of all the points I've said earlier about Kowalski being that he was trying to find a way to sort of fit into society and he couldn't find it and I think that's what I came away with from from this film so it's a it's a different angle on uh, a car chase movie as such which I like and it's actually a film that stayed with me it's one that I go back on for a number of reasons with the story and particularly the soundtrack as I mentioned earlier the soundtrack's great it's, it's, it's just um, <laughs> It's just so 70s, it's so gritty 70s, it's it's, uh, it's one I regularly visit. And just to mention other films that were about at this time, you also had another film called Gone in 60 Seconds, which was remade by um, Jerry Bruckheimer with Nicolas Cage, but there was the original one in the 70s. You also had Steven Spielberg's Jewel, and before this you had um, Bullet, which had uh, probably one of the greatest car chase scenes ever. And um, in recent times today, you've got The Fast and the Furious, uh, which was done brilliantly. It's done really well. I mean, it's, I don't know, has it got about eight, eight or nine sequels? It's a film that was like a sleeper hit at the time. So in the cinema world, uh, we do like a car chase movie. There is something about it. And I think it's just something about the sort of the open world, almost like being back in the times of like being a cowboy, getting on your horse and just riding off into the sunset. So... I think, as cinema goers, we all have a little bit of a soft spot for a car chase movie. And when they're done well, they're done well. So, there you go, guys. I'm not going to go any further than that, because that is bite-sized for me. That is vanishing point in a bite-sized. So, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. If you have seen it, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know. Uh, post some comments on the Facebook page. And talking about my Facebook page, I just set that up got that going so um let's have some fun with that and also to mention i'm a proud member of the legion podcast network um there's some great shows on there go check it out i will play a advert for that at the end of the show and that's it guys um i will be back for another episode soon um for episode number three in fact and i'm gonna be taking us on a High Seas Adventure for this one. It's one of my favourite films. I thought it came out in the 80s, but it actually came out in the late 70s. And it is the Sinbad movie, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger, which I'm really looking forward to talking about. And I'm going to take a bite out of that. And uh, <laughs> So look out for that one, guys. So, yeah, keep it bite-sized. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, enjoy yourselves out there and take care. See you later, guys. Bye.
If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.